Welcome back to the Liberating Generations podcast. I'm Reagan Clare, and this is my beautiful mother, Dr. Keisha Ewers. This episode is a deepening on the last episode we did on energy patterns and trauma. Energy patterns meaning whether you're earth, water, fire, air, and space. If you have no idea what that means, then go back and listen to the previous episode. And in this episode, we're going to dive into healing practices for each one of the energy systems. Ah, this is so great because, you know, we provided a lot of information and realized when we were into the episode, we're going to make this a two-part series, just like we do with the Enneagram, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a deepening of those energy systems. We have five energy systems that correlate with the five elements. Mm -hmm. We each have kind of one we run with as our normal day-to-day energy system. But then we have a couple tucked into our back pockets that we use as <laughs> back end and third string if the first one doesn't work, right? Mm-hmm. And so at the end, we did a quiz, uh, you know, at the end of the last episode to help you determine what your energy pattern runs as. And in that episode, we explored pretty deeply what the gifts are for each one, what the shadow is for each one, you know, how that default emotion shows through in each one. So now, you know, the whole point of knowing this is not so that we can contract around another way of describing our personality or contract around a fixed individual identity, but so we can liberate ourselves from subconscious and unconscious patterning that we may not even be aware. In fact, we're not aware of until we start going in and taking a look around in there and saying, oh, there's a pattern to how I perceive and how my body has formed itself around my energy. Mm -hmm. right which becomes very very relevant for you right Mm -hmm. yeah I think it's so important what you just said about we go into really uncovering our energy patterns and learning our Indian types and learning our human design and getting in touch with our astrology and really diving in deep to it just that we bring awareness to our shadows to why it is the way that we act in this world and it actually turns out that a lot of it was just predestined (laughs) a lot of it we came in already like the stars were in alignment and it was just going to happen and i think a lot of times people can end up contracting around what their enneotype is what their human design is what their zodiac sign is Mm -hmm. and that's exactly right what you just said mom it's not It's not to contract around that. It's not that I'm a Pisces and therefore, or. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I'm a Pisces, so I'm spiritual. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, it's so that we can really start, like really start borrowing from the other templates in certain circumstances in our lives and so that we can just be more well-rounded individuals. Yes. And, you know, the, the, the way it's so relevant for you too, as a student of chiropractic medicine is you see this, these different energy systems, how the body forms around them, Mm -hmm. right. In the people on your table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with any when we're talking about anything that's not well integrated, it's going to, it's going to show up uh, not fully integrated. Not like when someone shows up on my table, for example, with a very fiery system, uh, I'm not going to immediately just jump in and start adjusting them. I'm going to want to really ease into the system. Like fiery people are quite literally fiery to the touch. They oftentimes have heat emanating from them. Oftentimes they have musculature that is so tight, so rigid. And I mean, 
if you try to deliver a force into that, then you're just going to like, you're going to get burned. And so, yeah, with any, any element, uh, depending on what you are, it's so important to really, uh, really develop trust. And then also it's night and day difference between people who are conscious of the patterns that they run and are actively working on it compared to the people who just lay down and they don't know what to expect. They may, be, they may be at the very beginning of this journey. Right. Fix me. Right. Exactly. So what we're providing is information because through, you know, the, this podcast title is liberating generations. And so we're, you know, our objective is to help people free themselves of imprints and I call them fractalized structures that have formed around trauma patterns within family lineages. Mm -hmm. And so it's no accident that my Enneatype is a two and I have two daughters that are twos. And it's no accident mm -hmm. <laughs> that what a massage therapist works on all three of us and my mom, right? Grandma mm -hmm. says, whoa, you all have the same thing going on in your body, right? Because mm -hmm. our energy systems are so similar. This is intergenerational imprinting. Mm -hmm. So pretty yeah. fascinating. So fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What? Go ahead. Oh, no. I was just going to add that uh, I have doctors I've worked with who have said the very same thing. They sometimes do adjusting with families. They'll, they'll do flows with family members who are like four on a table next to each other. And they've told me that as they're adjusting one person, like let's say they're adjusting the mother, they will go back after after working on the other family members, they'll go back to the next person on the table. And what they just helped clear in the mom has now cleared in the daughter. So it, it's also so interesting as when you heal as a family unit, when one family member is healing, you are in turn healing future generations and also past generations. It's wild. That's, that's such a, a beautiful... We tend to think only in linearity, but it, that's a, a beautiful element of healing is mm -hmm. not only when you heal your small child parts of you and start attaching securely to you mm -hmm. are, you know, you're actually healing the older, wiser one that you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can say that the little girl or the little boy is the mother of the grandmother or the grandfather, right? The father mm -hmm. of the grandfather, because whatever that little one <laughs> put in place in terms of patterns is just going to keep self-repeating into the elder unless mm -hmm. something gets shifted. So what we're giving today are some practices for that. Mm. Yeah. So we talked, we started with the air or schizoid or vada. Uh, this, is, this is the the energy pattern that leaves <laughs> when feeling unsafe. And safety is a big issue for the, the air pattern. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's nice to go and hang out with the tarot deck or with the angels in prayer and meditation in the realms of the fairies and, you know, just in that magical space where we don't have to think about ourselves in our own bodies in this light, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the truth of the matter is, is your consciousness chose this incarnation with this body, with a certain set of skills to learn and a growth edge. And so being embodied is really important, not disassociating when things get tough. So the wise mind of the child learned that in trauma, it's really nice to leave the body. It's safe. It's so smart of a small one to do that. What we need to do is take our our adult self and then let that little one know 
that they are safe, that we're keeping them safe. So a couple of practices that can be done, you know, obviously if the shadow is to disassociate when things get hard, then grounding is really important. And you can model how a tree grounds itself, right? The core or the trunk of the body mm -hmm. be deeply connected or rooted to the earth through the bottoms of the feet. And this also helps core development, which is often not because there's a fragmented sense of self. Mm -hmm. That core development hasn't often completed for the person that likes to disassociate. Mm -hmm. as a strategy so what I mean, are some what are some practices that you would recommend doing for someone who maybe hasn't developed their core yet yeah so that's what we're doing we're we're actually visualizing the tree trees are safe they don't have an ego or an inner critic a tree is never going to criticize you for doing something wrong mm -hmm. so connect with a big strong friendly tree and ask it if it can show you how it grounds. Mm. Learn from the tree as a body-to-body -body transfer of knowledge, not a mental experience, right? And so you can make this a daily practice and, and branch out. That was a dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> to, to experience all kinds of different trees. Mm -hmm. Right. And then once you have an easy time grounding as a tree, you can move to being a mountain, communicate with the mountain with how it grounds. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's that's you want to feel that trunk, that core daily. What what sensations arise when you can feel your roots growing deeply into the core of the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you sit up straight and you imagine a line. It goes from the crown of your head down through your perineum. And, you know, you want to, whatever thoughts that arise in your head and feelings arise in your body, you just notice them. Just, just notice them. You don't have to hook into a story about them, but just start paying attention to how this body feels and not going off in your mind. Mm. Yeah. Are you listening to your body? What is it trying to convey to you? Yeah. Are you in a collaborative, compassionate, cooperative relationship with your body? Yeah. Or do you leave it all the time, disassociate from it? And, you know, we mentioned eating disorders can be part of the leaving or an addiction, right? Is in order to soothe the mind, did we disconnect from body and then don't treat it well yeah and so by by fully occupying your body and you can like i said use the template of tree tree's so great tree doesn't feel self-pity doesn't feel mm -hmm. right it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't go into power grabbing and dysfunctional ways it just just is mm -hmm. and it's in service with that you know, direct photosynthesis and delivering oxygen to all of us, right? And yeah. Converting our carbon dioxide into nutrition for itself. So it's this beautiful way of coming onto the other side of that cycle and experiencing what it feels like to be deeply grounded, deeply committed to its form, right? Yeah, I think I have another dad joke. It doesn't. The tree doesn't leave. Oh, <laughs> You're on fire. Your dad and brother would be so proud of me right now. They would. Oh my God. <laughs> God, They'd probably be barking. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, I know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> oh what would that says you have a lot of air you know just spending five minutes a day what would that feel like for you yeah uh i mean i do spend at least five minutes a day 
not doing that exact practice, but doing grounding practices. And it makes all the difference. You know, I'm in finals right now and I can notice with that high stress, you know, um, 10 finals in one week. And in that type of atmosphere, I'm, I can sense around me now that it's very high anxiety. All of the students that are operating um, at a very like high, high, high vibration. And I can track in myself when I'm leaving my body. It's happened a couple of times this last week where I've started to kind of leave. I need, and I, rather than leaving, I just go and I sit by myself and I get embodied again. And I breathe, I take deep breaths, I walk, I go for a run, I really exercise. And I've been dancing a lot this week and really actively trying to just get back inside of my system. Uh, And I've popped a lot, but yeah, the tree exercise is great. And something I wanted to add, since I do operate from a very high level of air, that whole, and I've been exploring my core this year, right? Within my sobriety, within recovery from eating disorder, I've really been trying to get in touch with uh, how it is that I operate without being swayed by the people around me, by my environment, what it is that I actually enjoy doing, how who I actually am outside of the external. And that's kind of what I would suggest to people who are out operating in their air right now, who may be struggling with getting embodied, who may be struggling with who would actually, who am I? I don't even know what my core is or who I am in my core is really getting silent and, and asking that, asking your source team, asking a higher power, asking the meditation, uh, what is it that I actually enjoy doing for me? Like what brings me joy? What brings me happiness? Um, that I feel like is the next layer of healing from operating in a unhealthy air. Beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. So we're going to move on to the oral or water pattern, merging pattern. Okay. Any of types nine and two left in. And this, this one is really a lot about developing core again. Um, and then also differentiating me from not me. Instead of trying to merge with whatever, whoever you think you must be responsible for and to make them okay so that you feel okay, Mm -hmm. right? You want to learn what is your need as your responsibility and that other people's needs are their responsibility. So it's important to learn how to clear out foreign energies that have gotten into your space. Um. Often because you've invited them. (laughs) And if you have autoimmunity, this is the practice your immune system is trying to learn. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, same thing. So a practice that you can do is to say your name. And then notice the energetic frequency of your name. And how it sounds to say it out loud, how it feels. Mm -hmm. This is the fragrance of you. It's your feeling tone, your isness. And then you want to track that, look for that same frequency in your core and ask that frequency to push anything in your core that isn't you, that doesn't resonate with you, that isn't in the same harmonic out. So imagine your core pushing gradually, expanding in diameter, pushing everything that's not you out ahead of it, like a glacier pushes rocks out of the way. Another way of doing this is to picture anything not you within your space lighting up so that you can see it and then use an imaginary vacuum cleaner to go around and vacuum all that stuff that's lit up. Or you can have anything not you just kind of like pop like bubbles and disappear 
have that energy go back to where it came from outside of you. So you're using your imagination in sort of a detoxification work. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, in developing core, just like with the leaving is also, you know, with the air energy pattern, this one's also important for the water because both of them are outward focused energies. Right. So Tibetan Buddhist prostration practice is a really beautiful core developer, <laughs> right? That's something that when you came home and we started working on your sobriety, it was like, okay, do these, you know, get yep. to the board. Here's what we're going to do. And so anything that we talked, you know, like being the tree um, for a water pattern, a, a little bit of actual beyond the energetic into the physical core development is important like pilates mm -hmm. alexander technique yoga they're all great practices for this and then like i said tibetan buddhist prostration mm -hmm. so it's it's getting really uh into learning to see that you have a core it needs to be developed and that this is a personal need Mm -hmm. instead of that focus on other people's needs all the time mm -hmm. i don't think it's for me at least it wasn't until i really developed a core <laughs> that i realized how undeveloped it was yeah yeah same here right and mm -hmm. and for a water type there aren't uh, like boundaries have to be established because there's mm -hmm. emerging and so this is a lot of the highly sensitive people, intuitives, psychic, uh, empaths. And so a lot of the overwhelm that is felt inside of that energy system, that run emerging pattern is caused by having a weak will, non-disciplined mind, weak emotional strength, right? Leaning into other people by either being compensated and rescuing all the time or from a victim place and wanting to be rescued. Mm -hmm. So really intentionally exercising your will over and over and strengthening it through exercise, the way you would strengthen a muscle mm -hmm. allows you to push through challenges rather than collapsing because collapsing is one of the shadows of the, the water type. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I, I'm overwhelmed. I'm exhausted. Right. And so it's disciplining the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I am in the middle of that right now. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. So good. Every, I feel like every day uh, yeah. you'll ask me how my spiritual practice is going. <laughs> <laughs> my, my spiritual practice includes 110 prostrations every morning or every day. And I think you could tell when I was not doing 110 anymore. I was maybe doing 50. And then there were a couple of days last week where I missed it because we're getting to the end of the quarter and I'm getting really tired. And today I, well, this week actually, I recommitted. I was like, I have to be on it with my spiritual practice because I noticed I my cup was a lot more empty and I'm, I'm able to catch it a lot sooner now because now that I know how much how good I can feel and mm -hmm. how grounded I can feel and how much I actually can be of service from that space when I'm really giving to myself first. That is so important. And I've noticed feeling a little bit snappier with people when I haven't been doing my practices and um, jumping to kind of negative thought patterns when I don't do my practices. And yeah, like I said, I catch, I caught it a lot sooner than I normally would have. Uh, so good for you. Yeah. Well, you just segued into the other practice for water and that's developing good self care routines. Self care, exactly. Yeah. So important, you know, that you're able to actually measure your own needs and feel mm -hmm. your fatigue, your hunger, your loneliness, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you want to measure your own capacities and be able to strengthen them. Mm -hmm. That might be that you have to reach out for help, right? Mm -hmm. Or some support. Sometimes the motivation is really 
strengthened if you can picture this this complete commitment to self-care as caring for your own inner child, your your little one who, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're tired. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, like you don't look at your child if you're a mom and go, eh, you don't you don't need dinner tonight because I'm too tired to feed you. <laughs> you know, you just don't do that, right? Uh, and so I, I never look at my dogs and say, meh, you don't need to go outside to go to the bathroom because I'm too tired. You know, it's, it's like, it's important to do that for yourself too. Mm-hmm. That you don't ever say I'm too tired for these really important practices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the earth pattern. This is called the burdened or enduring pattern. And this one, you know, how like the air pattern, a, a lot of times air people need to learn how to sit still and meditate. The earth pattern needs to learn to move. <laughs> and so they need to do 30 minutes or more of vigorous exercise every day, like running, dancing, cycling, walking, just something that moves your hips and the rest of your body. You, not just weightlifting, because it tends to be that Earth people love weightlifting and yeah. don't love to move. And, you know, so, right? Yeah. So, so that's one is a very good daily routine of, of really moving. And I would say 30 minutes is not enough for an Earth person. It would be, I mean, we go out two to three hours a day. That's, that's what an earth person kind of needs. Mm-hmm. But 30 minutes of, you know, is minimum. And then fill the space with your own energy. So there's a practice that we have a teacher in the Andes in Peru, Puma. Puma. Yeah. And <laughs> he taught us a practice that I do in the medicine journey and trauma healing retreats a lot called Hucha. And so it it involves emptying all your negative energy out of your body through your mouth and dumping dumping it into the earth or Pachamama. Because she uses that as a fertilizer to grow flowers and vegetables, right? So should we talk about how to do that? Yeah, please. All right, so you start by standing upright with your legs hip width apart and your knees slightly bent. And then with a really deep inhale, you raise your hands from your sides above your head and you fill up your lungs with air. And then on the exhale, you bend from your waist and you drop, right? Forcefully forcing that air out. And along with that air comes all the pent up negative energy and you just, you just let that come out of your mouth. You stick your tongue out and you go like a big loud <laughs> roaring sound. <laughs> and then you repeat that as many times as you need to until you feel that your channels are clear and you're taking up space in your environment and your energy is flowing again. Okay. This really helps move stuck energy. Um, yeah, that's actually one of the reasons why I love prostration so much. Yeah. Just because, yeah, if you're an earth person, look into, look into Nundra, look into prostrations. <laughs> we can do an, we can do an entire episode just on that. We could, we could. You need to have a teacher though. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk about fire. And this is healing the aggression pattern, also called psychopathic. And, you know, this is the warrior, right? Feeling defended, protected. If you cry, it's weak. Do not show weakness under any circumstances. And weakness is actually being in touch with your emotion. (laughs) And so with this one, it's, you know, practices would really be so much about anger work. It's really important to allow an aggressive patterned you know, person's anger rip while he or she is being physically contained. So sometimes like in men's groups, they'll do that where other strong men are there to hold them down while they rage. Mm -hmm. So this would let him see that he's not too much. 
he won't blow out the container of energy that's holding him. Really important for these any type eights and warrior uh, people that in our our culture we keep them tamped down pretty much because we don't have a good relationship with anger and a lot of people a lot of women are afraid of anger and so they tend to try and like keep themselves really contained and so an environment for that kind of just like letting that rage rip and knowing that they're not going to explode the world Mm -hmm. with their anger right which is sometimes what's happening inside of them like if I really let this all out, it would, it would blow up the world. Yeah. yeah. And then another practice is learning to function from inner peace, right? So without having to have an adrenaline surge, you know, accessing action from a calm, safe place as a practice. Day you can go for a walk and get revved up by making it into a contest with yourself mm-hmm. and then wait for 30 minutes after finishing your walk and go for a second walk and this time just walk for pleasure mm-hmm. and the world will seem like a completely different place right I remember moving from marathon runner that was constantly checking my personal time on my watch mm-hmm to being able to go out and just enjoy a walk. It was a huge change, Mm. huge change. So yeah, I can, I have some fire in me and boy, just to be able to experience, you know, a a laid back walk. I don't know that anybody that walk with me calls it laid back, but it's not running. (laughs) Basically running, but okay. <laughs> it's the fastest walk you'll ever see. <laughs> but, but it's not trying to make a personal best, you know, as far as like, we need to be doing a, a, a three minute mile, you know? Yeah. 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 And there's, I think the beauty of that practice is then you have choices. You don't mm-hmm. always have to be doing your best time you you know how you've learned how to lean into pleasure uh that there are you know there are times where it's important to be able to turn on that fire energy and to use it as a motivation so it's not that we're saying that fire is bad it's just knowing that it's okay to turn it off sometimes and it's knowing the difference how it feels inside of you and how to access it for sure yeah yeah it's not Necess- I mean, yeah, it can be a very uh, sympathetic response right? Uh, when it's not channeled properly. Yeah. You sent me an Instagram video that you would make of a seminar mm-hmm. that you did uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it was like all the energy and there was fire. <laughs> well, oh, my gosh, that's scary. I wouldn't let any of those people adjust me because it was so fiery. And you're like, oh, my gosh, it's so much fun. And, you know, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, it looks like you guys are having a great time. And it was it was so cool. Yeah. Well, as someone who operates from water and air, I I need to channel that fire. So being in a room, I remember uh, a couple of years ago, I did a seminar with very fiery people as well. And this goes back to you saying women are oftentimes afraid of anger. And the fire that goes with anger. And absolutely, I'm, that is something that I am actively working on within myself. So it was nice to be at this place I'm in now, in a room, in a very similar room with fiery people. And, and actually just stepping into the fire and channeling it and embodying it. Because I, yeah, I have the water down and I have the emotional empathy nurturer down. But when it comes to really that, fieriness that some people respond really well to it's something that i need to uh, embody more of beautiful Mm -hmm. all right we're to our last energy pattern that's space and it's also called the rigid pattern and this is this one's loosening the one right way to do things (laughs) a lot you know this is a lot of like any type one 
Um, and so using the serenity prayer as a practice is a really wonderful way to realize that there's more than one way to perceive, more than one way to feel, more than one way to do anything. And the mm -hmm. need to control this only results in struggle. One of my favorite things to say these days is there are 8.1 billion ways of being a human because we have 8.1 billion humans on the planet and no two are alike. And, you know, the arrogance of believing that there's only one way people should should behave mm -hmm. and everyone should be in agreement with me, you know, <laughs> it's, all, yeah. it's loosening that up and bringing some humor to it, which Humor is really important for the rigid pattern for the space people. And so using the serenity prayer is a really beautiful way. That's it's not humorous, but it allows that, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. It's just a reminder inside, right? Grant mm -hmm. me the serenity to be able to even start to evaluate that, right? Mm -hmm. What what here um, is not even up to me to change? Yeah. Yeah. And what do I need the courage, which will usually be inside of myself to change? Right. Yeah. So, of course, you're very familiar with this prayer, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the prayer we do in AA. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's such, it's so beautifully placed in a place where people are, you know, using a substance of some kind to self-soothe when control has not been able to be attained. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yep. I always say the biggest addiction is actually to control. And then, and then we have self-soothing methods that we use <laughs> when we can't, right? Yeah. yeah. And the, there's a lack of humility when we try to control and the humility in those rooms of just giving it all up and saying, mm. all right, offering it to a higher power. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. So then another practice for the, the rigid energy type is exploring pleasure and fun right? Taking what we talked about with the fire energy a little bit further, your spiritual path, if you have a rigid energy system, is to learn to tolerate pleasure. Isn't that interesting? Tolerate it. <laughs> and so this needs to happen in small ways, like a, an organic ripe strawberry, you know, pleasure of the color, the shape, right? the form, the beauty of a strawberry that Mother Nature has just given you. Mm -hmm. And then the smell of the strawberry, like each of these small, like each sense, bring it forward and allow pleasure to flow from that. And then the taste of that, right? Savoring it. So you can just, just start with that, you know, the strawberry pleasure practice. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Yeah. And then you can move to bigger and bigger ways. Like and then, and sexual then you can... would be the final, right? It's like, I yeah. was about to say, then grab some whipped cream, get with your partner, spray a little. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. We were on the same wavelength. I know. You know me. God, it's like, it's like we're related or something. It's like we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> so then for the rigid, you know, pattern, what can you explore with complete surrender, right? And and actually wallow in the pleasure of it. For a rigid energy pattern, that can be sort of tough to identify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go two practices for each of the the energy systems oh thank you so much for sharing that it's very yeah. Helpful. yeah and a little input from gracie the dog She's <laughs> like, she needed to shake right then in the middle of it <laughs> <laughs> practicing her pleasure 
I have, I have Sam right behind me too. And he's, yeah. oh, he's definitely practicing relaxation and surrender. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a pro at that. If you need yeah. help, just uh, go to my Instagram and take a look at how Sam lives life. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing it right. He is. <laughs> All right. Well, we hope you enjoy these practices and the witnessing of your own energy system and just making friends with it. That's the thing, not judging it, witnessing the ways that it can get in your way and stop you and then moving through that as you heal and work with these practices. Yeah. Send this to someone that you think could benefit and if you got something from these practices, this episode, previous episodes, please don't, uh, please like and subscribe uh, so that you will get notified anytime we release a new episode. That really helps us out. Yes, it does. So you want to give your website? Oh, yeah. If you, in fact, if you really do want to go and see photos of my adorable dog, um, if you got them, <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at Taste of Liberation. And then my website is just www.tasteofliberation.com. Mm -hmm. And to work with me, it's drkeisha.com, D-R-K-E-E-S-H-A.com. Also, funny, funnily enough, pictures of my beautiful dogs. And then Instagram and Facebook, the same, Dr. Keisha. All right, everybody. Until next time, be well.